In your everyday life, you have probably experienced how good planning makes a difference in how things turn out. In marketing, campaigns also require planning for the best outcomes. In this part of the course, you'll learn how to create media plans for campaigns and set performance goals so you can measure their success. There are many software tools to manage these types of campaigns and help monitor their performance. You'll be introduced to the reporting capabilities in Google Ads and Google Analytics and how you can use the metrics in these tools to monitor campaign performance. You can tell if your campaign is a success by the metrics or the numbers. Move on to the next course item to learn more. Hello, it's great that you're here to learn. For me, learning new skills is like working on a construction project. Continuous progress is made as a tall building rises. In this video, you'll be learning about media plans and performance goals. In construction, architectural plans help people visualize a building before it's built. In marketing, media plans help people understand what's in a marketing campaign before it's run. And just like how architectural plans have dimensions like height and width that are used when a building is constructed, media plans have requirements like number of impressions and number of clicks that should be met when a campaign is run. The number of impressions is how many times an ad is displayed, and the number of clicks measures responses. These are examples of performance goals. A performance goal is a target that has a measurable numeric value. Performance goals can apply to marketing goals or specific campaigns in a media plan. When performance goals apply to marketing goals, they are sometimes called marketing objectives. Here's a real example of the power of a media plan with a clear marketing objective. Google had a marketing goal to reach Black and Latinx audiences in the United States. Google's media plan called for 15% of Google's brand campaign budget to be spent on culturally relevant media. That was the performance goal. As a result, campaigns were more inclusive. One campaign targeted media events with high viewership among black audiences. It delivered a 13% increase in brand advocacy among black adults 35 to 49 years old. Another campaign to sponsor the Latin Grammys resulted in a 14% increase in Spanish speaking adults 18 to 49 years old, likely to consider the purchase of a Pixel 5 phone. The media plan was the starting point to achieve these campaign results. You can go to the thinkwithgoogle.com website to read the full article called Inside Google Marketing, Our Approach to Inclusive Media Planning and Buying. Now let's think about performance goals for specific campaigns. The most important performance goal for an ad campaign is return on ad spend, often called ROAS. ROAS is a number calculated as the ratio of revenue generated to the amount spent on advertising. ROAS is a performance goal that you'll often include in media plans. Now that you understand the importance of media plans to successful campaigns, you'll appreciate choosing media for a variety of marketing budgets and setting performance goals. For best results, always create a media plan. When you do this, you'll be building your knowledge and skills too. Get ready to learn more about media planning. But first, you need to know what a media plan contains. A media plan contains details about where, when, and how often an ad will appear across all media channels, including radio, TV, newspapers, magazines, paid search, and social media. Because this program is for digital marketing, your media planning will focus on digital media. To remember this fact, you'll refer to your media plans as digital media plans. When you create a digital media plan, you'll need to consider who your target audience is. Ask yourself, whom do I need to reach? You'll also need to consider how much you can spend, or the budget, which channels get how much of your budget, or in the media mix, and how long the campaign will run, or the duration. And finally, you'll need to figure out what the key performance indicators, or KPIs, are and the performance goals and metrics you'll use to measure how you're reaching the targeted performance. Let's review previous definitions for business and marketing goals and KPIs because performance goals are created from these. A business goal is a desired aim, achievement, or outcome for a business. Examples of business goals include growing revenue, increasing profit, gaining market share, 
and improving customer service. A marketing goal is a specific objective in a marketing plan or strategy that supports a business goal. Examples of marketing goals include raising brand awareness, increasing web traffic, generating new leads, and increasing customer value. A key performance indicator, or KPI, is a measurement used to gauge how successful a business is in its effort to reach a business or marketing goal. Since KPIs are numeric, they often serve as performance targets for marketing goals. However, because they aren't specific enough for individual campaigns, you normally would create an additional performance goal for each campaign. These campaign level performance goals would be included in your digital media plan. When you create performance goals for campaigns, they should factor into a performance measurement for an overall marketing goal. In fact, if there is good alignment, campaign level performance goals should clearly lead back to a marketing goal and even back to a relevant business goal. You learn that return on ad spend or ROAS is a performance goal that is often included in digital media plans. Let's walk through an example. Suppose a business goal to grow revenue is a priority. You might hear that your organization has been given a green light to move ahead with plans to grow revenue. A marketing goal that provides direction and supports the business goal could be a targeted marketing effort across a mix of media. A ROAS performance goal may be set at this level. If you're working on three digital ad campaigns as part of the marketing plan, you could set a performance goal for each campaign. As you monitor the ROAS for each channel, your measurements would contribute towards meeting the ROAS set for the overall marketing effort. Up until now, ROAS has been referred to as a number, but without an actual value assigned. Here's how to calculate ROAS. To keep it simple, let's use an example of a business that sells a single product. ROAS can be calculated as the number of products sold times the cost per unit divided by the ad spend. If it costs $80 in advertising to sell three units of a $100 product, the ROAS is 3.75. For every dollar they spend on advertising, they make $3.75. ROAS is often reported as a ratio, so for this scenario, the ROAS would be 3.75 to 1. You may also come across ROAS as a percentage. For this scenario, it would be 375%. To summarize, the same ROAS can be expressed as a number, ratio, or percentage. We can now add some numbers to the previous example. If the business goal is to grow revenue by 10% and a five to one ROAS has been set for the marketing goal, you can assign individual ROAS targets for each channel. For example, you could start with a three to one ROAS for search ads, a four to one ROAS for display ads, and a two to one ROAS for social media ads. People typically use results from previous campaigns to help set ROAS targets for a new campaign. A common choice is to set the ROAS to the same or slightly below the value achieved in previous campaigns. If historical data isn't available, you can make your best estimate and adjust the targets after you review some of the initial metrics from the campaign. Dynamic changes are allowed. The relationship between performance metrics and marketing goals demonstrates why it's important to include performance goals in digital media plans. The path from one to the other should be clearly mapped out. In the example, all individual ROAS targets would work together to achieve an overall five to one ROAS. You'll get an opportunity later to practice creating a digital media plan that includes target audience, budget, marketing mix, duration, KPIs, and performance goals. You learn that a performance goal is a target that has a measurable numeric value. Performance goals and their associated metrics define success. Without them, it's simply a feeling or guesswork on how a campaign is actually benefiting a business. This video has three examples of how performance goals are based on business and marketing goals. Suppose a business goal for an e-commerce store is to improve customer acquisition by 20% over the next three months. Customer acquisition is a marketing term for the process of gaining new customers. Customer acquisition for an e-commerce store depends on traffic to the site. The more traffic coming to the site, the greater the chance of acquiring new customers. A campaign is planned to help generate more traffic to the site to improve customer acquisition. For the campaign, you set an initial performance goal of a 20% increase in weekly new visitor counts to match the desired business goal. To determine whether you're meeting your performance goal, you monitor the metrics for new visitors to the site and compare them to the previous baseline numbers. Once you reach a 20% increase, you've met your performance goal. 
but it may take more than one performance target to satisfy a business goal. In the previous scenario, what if new visitors come to the site but leave without taking action? That's called bounce. The bounce rate is the number of bounce sessions divided by the number of total sessions. If you increase your new visitor count but have a high bounce rate, you might not reach the business goal of improving customer acquisition by 20%. Try setting a second performance goal to reduce the bounce rate by 50%. Then monitor the performance metrics for new visitor counts and bounce rate. You can observe that weekly increases to new visitor counts aren't offset by bounce rate that is too high, and the number of returning visitors is holding steady, or increasing along with an increase in the number of new visitors. In the second example, a business goal is set to achieve $50,000 in incremental sales over the next month. A marketing goal follows to increase the marketing return on investment, or ROI, by two times its current value. To determine a performance goal and additional budget at a campaign level, perform a couple calculations. First, determine how many more orders need to be placed to generate an additional $50,000 in incremental sales. For this calculation, you can use the average order value, or AOV. AOV is the sum of individual order amounts divided by the number of orders. Let's assume the AOV is $148. Divide the target incremental sales of 50,000 by the average order value of 148 to get the number of additional orders, or 338. So the performance goal is an additional 338 orders. Next, if the current marketing ROI is two and the marketing goal is to double it, you can assume a four to one ROAS to be aligned. You can then calculate the incremental budget you need by dividing the incremental sales amount by the return on ad spend. Divide the incremental sales amount, 50,000, by the target row as four. You will need to request $12,500 of additional campaign budget to drive additional sales. In the last example, the marketing goal is to increase the conversion volume from social media by 25% over the next six months. Conversion volume is the total number of conversions or total monetary value of conversions over a period of time. A conversion happens when a potential customer takes a desired action. If you're measuring conversion volume by the total number of conversions, you can set a performance goal for an individual channel. For example, over the next six months, you could try to increase by 10% the number of conversions and sessions referred from Instagram. If you're measuring conversion volume as a monetary value, you'll need to assign monetary values to different types of conversions, such as leads or purchases. This can normally be set up and monitored in tools like Google Ads. A performance goal in this case would be a certain monetary amount by the end of the six month period. For example, $100,000 attributed to conversions in sessions referred from Instagram. Congratulations, you made it through learning how to create performance goals from business and marketing goals. These examples are quite detailed, so feel free to replay the video as a review or for help to complete other course activities. You'll practice creating performance goals on your own. You'll also get a chance to work in the reverse direction too. Given a report from a completed marketing campaign, you'll be able to view the performance metrics and identify related business or marketing goals. Hi there, you're making good progress in this course. Keep it up. When you began the program, you were introduced to the skills that are in demand for digital marketing and e-commerce. If you are taking the courses in this program in the recommended order, you have worked on skills to contribute to marketing and ad strategies, create search, display, and social media ads, run email campaigns, expand customer reach, raise brand awareness, and engage customers with content. Some additional skills can be classified under the category of analytics. These include how to set and monitor campaign performance, analyze metrics, identify trends, optimize customer engagement, and gather insights for future campaigns. Marketing analytics can be applied to a customer journey, website, application, or marketing campaign. They all depend on a process to monitor desired KPIs and performance goals. During a campaign, your team might set goals, run tests, monitor metrics, make adjustments, and then repeat the process until the desired goals are met. Software tools are required for marketing analytics. In this course, you'll mainly use Google Analytics and Google Ads to monitor metrics and measure campaign performance.
You'll also learn how tools like Google Ads can be used to run tests on pages, ads, and target groups, and how tools like Google Optimize can plug in to a website to test content options. These kinds of tests are called A-B or split tests. An A-B test, also known as a split test or a bucket test, is an online test of two variants to determine the better performing option. Here's how it works. Suppose you have two versions of a direct response. One goal of an A-B test might be to test which page and which response performs better based on the number of clicks. During the test, traffic is equally split between the two pages. In other words, 50% of traffic is randomly directed to one page and 50% of traffic is randomly directed to the other page. One direct response outperforms the other by receiving more clicks. As a result of the test, you deploy the direct response ad that got more clicks. Teams choose their tools based on capabilities, features, and cost. Some tools are designed for monitoring of events, like click analysis, monitoring of visuals and graphics, or displaying dashboards. Other tools are designed for more sophisticated analytics. The tools you use will often depend on a combination of organization, team, and project needs. Be open to using tools that you haven't used before. No matter which tools your team uses, you'll also want to be aware of what the tools can or can't do before you use them. Understanding the capabilities of the tools you use will enable you to choose the metrics that work best for your project. I remember the first time I used Google Analytics. There were so many reports to explore and I didn't know where to begin. Over time, I became more comfortable using some key reports and learned from my customers which metrics were important to them. I asked questions to understand how they used analytics to expand their e-commerce business. As you gain more experience with tools like Google Analytics, you can become someone who can answer those questions too. Reporting the right metrics will enable you and your team to learn and share the most useful insights. There are a lot of software tools for analytics use. This video will introduce you to the Google Analytics demo available to everyone with a Google account. Think of this as a guided tour of the reporting capabilities before you explore them on your own. The demo contains live data from the Google Merchandise Store in Floodit, a gaming app in Google Play. When you access the demo, you must choose a property to view. In Google Analytics, a property is a website, mobile application, or web page that is associated with a unique measurement ID to enable metrics collection. A Google Analytics account contains one or multiple properties. A single property can contain combined metrics for a website and app, but multiple properties are useful if a business has multiple websites and apps or has very distinct user segments on a single website or app. When you create a new property, you specify the website, app, or page so that a new measurement ID can be established and metrics collected. Let's sign into the demo account from the demo account page by choosing the Google Analytics 4 property for the Google Merchandise Store. No matter which property you initially choose for the demo, if you click the drop down for your current view, you can display all the properties associated with the demo account and click open to switch to a different property. At this time, there are UA properties and GA4 properties. UA properties are for an older version of Google Analytics that collects website metrics only. Because Google Analytics 4 collects metrics from both websites and mobile apps, new accounts should use GA4 properties. There's also an attribution project for the Google Merchandise Store in the demo. Attribution is the act of assigning credit for conversions from ads, last clicks, or other touch points along a user's path to conversion completion. In other words, Attribution gives credit where credit is due. A conversion can be a macro conversion or a micro conversion. A macro conversion is typically a completed purchase transaction. A micro conversion is a completed response that indicates that a potential customer is moving towards a macro conversion. Micro conversions are referred to as other touch points in the previous definition for attribution. Attribution projects provide organization for both macro and micro conversions. Now let's view some of the reports in the GA4 property for the Google Merchandise Store. Beginning at the report snapshot at the top, you can click the tabs to view summary information about all users, new users, average engagement time, and total revenue. Let's scroll down. You can see insights, user and traffic acquisition, user trends, top campaigns, most page views, top events, top conversions, top selling products, 
and conversions by platform. What's interesting are the automated insights. These will change as measurements vary, but you can monitor when there are spikes or unforecasted changes. For example, you might see an unforecasted spike in conversions. The real-time menu displays current user activity on the website. You can view users by device and geography. You can view users by source, audience, and page. And you can view events and conversions. The lifecycle menu displays information for the customer lifecycle. The acquisition submenu has details about user and traffic acquisition. Click acquisition overview to view a summary. The engagement submenu has details about events, conversions, pages, and screens. Interestingly, if you click conversions and scroll down, you can view the numbers for the begin, checkout, and purchase events to get an estimate of how many users leave products in the shopping cart without completing a purchase. The monetization submenu has details about website and in-app purchases. And finally, the retention submenu has information about user retention and lifetime value over a 120-day period. User retention measures how many new users return to the website over a period of time. Customer lifetime value is the average revenue generated by customers over a certain period of time. The user menu breaks down demographics and devices for engaged users on the website. Click demographics overview to view users by country, city, gender, interests, age, or language. Click tech overview to view users by platform, operating system, device, browser, screen resolution, app version, and mobile device model. This completes the highlights of the GA4 reports for the Google Merchandise Store. You should now be familiar with how to locate and navigate to various metrics in Google Analytics. In other course activities, you'll use the demo account again to examine metrics more closely. Google Ads is Google's online advertising platform. Using Google Ads, a marketer can create online ads to reach specific audiences interested in the products or services their business offers. If this is your first introduction to Google Ads, this video will provide a guided orientation. When you're working on a campaign in Google Ads, you'll need to know what you can view in the dashboard, how to find a campaign and its metrics, how to access and act on recommendations that Google Ads provides, and how to view reports. When you sign into Google Ads, you'll see a dashboard or overview of all campaigns. You should be able to find your campaign listed in the Draft Campaigns card or the Campaigns card in the dashboard. Active campaigns are listed with links. Click an individual link to view the settings for a single campaign. The overview page is a high-level view of how your campaigns are performing. This is where you will look for things like overall trends, click volumes, top keywords searched, and top performing ads. You can also click to start a new campaign. You can also see the data for all campaigns by going to the campaigns page. All campaigns are listed along with their metrics like clicks and conversions. You can adjust the time frame for the metrics to increase or decrease the period for which you're evaluating the metrics. One important column to check is the budget column. This is where you would monitor budget spend and any campaign limitations you have in the budget. If you go to the recommendations page, you'll see a percentage that serves as an optimization score. The closer the score is to 100%, the better your advertising is performing. You can review the recommendations on this page to potentially take action on one or more of them to help improve the optimization score of your advertising. If you have more than one campaign, the optimization score is cumulative for all campaigns. Each recommendation is shown as a scorecard with a predicted impact. If a predicted impact is something you think would benefit a campaign, you can click to view the details of the recommendation. From there, you can choose to apply that recommendation to that campaign. The final page for this orientation is the reports page. The reports page is where you can pull reports for campaign performance. You can use predefined templates for reports or build a custom report by choosing the metrics you want to include. Click to open the template you want. 
For example, the landing page report shows performance metrics, conversions, days to conversion, and more for each landing page. These performance metrics are extremely helpful for ad placement. This completes the orientation for Google Ads. You should now be familiar with viewing the dashboard for an overview of campaigns, viewing the metrics for individual or all campaigns, applying recommendations to campaigns to improve the overall advertising health score, and using the reporting feature. You'll learn how to monitor specific metrics later. Hi there. Let's begin by asking a question. Do you ever wish you could know what the future will be like in your chosen field? Marketing is changing with the rise of big data, predictive analytics, and AI. What could marketing be like in the future? This video introduces you to a few possibilities. Marketing professionals are noticing several trends. Two are related to analytics and two are for automation. Big data makes these trends possible. Big data refers to a field in analytics that systematically mines and extracts information from very large data sets for insights. Big data can also refer to the large data sets themselves. Financial companies use big data for risk analysis. Manufacturers use big data to optimize supply chains. Here's how marketing organizations are using big data. The first trend is real-time analytics. Real-time analytics monitors immediate data to gain insights to respond to events more quickly. If you think about it, marketers can adjust a marketing campaign only as fast as they can monitor the data. And the more detailed the data, the better. If big data is pulled together and filtered with greater speed, marketers can respond to underperforming aspects of a campaign immediately or in real time. So if real-time analytics tells them a target audience isn't responding, the message for that audience can be adjusted right away. Big data also plays a role in what is called predictive analytics. Predictive analytics uses historical data to predict what might happen. So if predictive analytics is applied to models created from collective browsing histories, marketers might be able to identify the right audience for a successful campaign early on. Predictive analytics can also help marketers choose an optimal page or an ad without performing an A-B test, saving both time and money. Autonomous marketing uses real-time analytics to automate marketing activities. For example, autonomous marketing can adjust an underperforming message automatically. This can increase the impact of multi-channel marketing campaigns. Autonomous marketing can also be highly effective to promote and maintain customer loyalty programs. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is a field developing intelligent machines and software that simulate human thought or work. Multi-channel campaigns are often difficult to manage because of the amount of content that needs to be created for each channel. If AI can be used to help create and personalize content, marketers can offer context-specific experiences for users, and optimize experiences in e-commerce can turn more browsers into buyers. These trends are finding their way into platforms and systems. Automation and AI are a new standard. For instance, Google Ads offers automated bidding, and Google Ads Smart Bidding uses machine learning to analyze data in real time to show the right message to the right customer at the right time. One thing is certain, as these trends continue their growth, new roles will open up in marketing. You'd have a good chance of being correct if you say the future analytics is already here. Congratulations on finishing this video from the Google Digital Marketing and E-Commerce Certificate. Access the full experience on Coursera, including job search help, and start earning the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here, and subscribe to our channel for more lessons from Google Career Certificate.